motherfuckers stay it off the fucking clip. Yeah, just how I do. Well, fuck you, everybody, man. Be the fucking fucking ass. The K district is absolutely mental. I don't think my mother would let me go to work if she knew what I was dealing with every day. Any reason you have a hammer and a hatchet in the back of your car? Everyone move back. Move back now. My most favourite type of person to do is someone half mad. <laughs> and I knew I was going to get all that in the K. Like. Walking, now we wankers. We have a running joke that when you leave, you should get a medal. I survived the K. It's out of this world. It's mad. All these words they've heard before, and it doesn't do justice. You know, we're in the face of the people that they're writing about in the papers every day. Because what the fuck are you up to? Well, we're just doing a bit of gardening. <laughs> My first day, I got out. I thought I was after being dropped in Beirut. It is the Wild West. Like I went to one car one night, and they were they had bone arrows. They were firing arrows at each other. Before I ever came out here, I'd heard about the K district and that it was a mad spot. It absolutely is everything people have said that it is. People now, since the recession is over, I think it's acceptable to go out and to, you know, take cocaine and nights out and stuff like that. And then we see what happens on the K streets. Cocaine is something that is acceptable to average people and I suppose it has become as accepted now as a night out and a few scoops in the pub. They don't perceive themselves as being part of this problem, but realistically, those drugs are actually coming out of houses in Finglas. If you think that you're in a city centre bar and you're taking a little bit of cocaine and you're not contributing to or funding gangland crime, you're, you're sadly, sadly mistaken. Give us a second, will you? Yeah. The tiny amount of heroin or cocaine can be absolutely deadly, and the amount of drugs they have is passed up the line. It gets pooled with other drugs, and it eventually ends up in in the people who organise the international shipments. Come here now. Do you remember the last time we set your gaff over there? You were told you told us something there, and then there was something in the kitchen. No, Tom. So I'm just asking you again to be honest, okay? So it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a, glor a glorified Ponzi scheme. Everybody pays in but everybody gets, gets their cut of, of a big shipment that comes out. It's all about easy money for them. You don't know what's going on around here, this. So why do you think we're here this morning? All right, I just want to show you right, what's done. No, yeah. No, yeah, there's cash here I'm going to show you, right? It's not a camera. Right, anyway, what do, you, what do you think that looks like? It's a drug deal. 20 grand. Mm. Jammed in the kitchen. Jammed. Yeah, she says it's got to do with the log cabin and it's her father's for an inheritance and everything like that. But we're just going to go back and, and I'd say now we're going to probably end up arresting somebody for money laundering, you know? Just for example, right, that's a thousand euros, right? Yeah. And like, if there's ten overdoses in that, just for example, mm -hmm. like what did that cost the state and what does it cost the taxpayer? You know, when you consider that the poor, unfortunate person with the She's addiction, doing addiction issues, like when you consider what that poor, unfortunate had to do for that, mm. the crime, like, you know, it's unbelievable, really, isn't it? It's kind of rare that you meet somebody that say they're, they're selling the drugs to make money because they know the system. They know, you know, if you're a victim of drugs, that's the way to come across. You know, you, you could be dealt with more severely in the courts by saying you're selling drugs and you're actually making money out of it, rather than I'm, I'm a victim in all of this. In the K, we have a team of uh, members that are dedicated to targeting individuals involved in the sale and supply of drugs due to the large volumes of drugs and the impact of drugs at different levels in the community. So their job is to gather intelligence, identify who's involved in street dealing, right up to those that stash and hoard the drugs for distribution to that level. Have you have you got cannabis in the house? Have you weed in the house? Yeah, I do. How much? Five, five grams? That's it? Yeah. He said there's only five grams, which, 100 euro, thereabouts. He's coming around with us to the house. He's been told there's a warrant. 
Anyone here? No. I don't think so. I'm not sure. Where's your room? Which room? I'm sorry. I don't know, we have to weigh it, but it's in the it's in the hundreds anyway at the minute. We're going to weigh 225. 325, 335. Whatever else, the rooms aren't done upstairs. More bags. Vacuum pack bags. When I started in the guards, people smoked hash, right? And then weed started getting more and more prominent. THC level now in cannabis, it's four times stronger than what it used to be. What's that stuff in your bedroom? This? Yeah. Uh, it's a flower. Flower? Yeah. Do you bake in the bedroom? No, no. Uh, my baby was playing with it. Cooking up crack. He's everything there for cooking. cooking. He's obviously mixing it with coke and cook. He's How much moaning. He says that by stuff speed. Yeah, the speed there as well. Do you more of it? Say, so, yeah. That's a vacuum pack thing for vacuum packing as well. Mm -hmm. People addicted to drugs, selling drugs because they owe money for drugs. And they're kind of ensnared in the lifestyle it leads to. You get people from all over, they'll get the bus, the bus stop is there, they'll get drugs and back onto the next bus and they'll be gone again. There's so much money to be made. Um, people drive from all over the Finglas, uh, like the surrounding counties, to come up and get drugs because if you can't get anywhere else, you can come up to Finglas and get it. How long are you doing drugs? Um, since I'm about 12, 12 years of age. And how old are you now? Cannabis. 36. Then methadone, heroin. But then when the crack came on the same, my God, it fucked up the whole bleeding place. How many would you use now in a day? Yesterday I got 120 pounds worth. We wow. get half an, a half, a half an eight, to be honest. Use All it. gone? Use it in yeah, one day. gone in about 20 minutes. I think I've nearly seen all types of drugs now at this stage. Cocaine, you have crack cocaine, we have heroin, you know, so there's a lot of that going around now. Two five, caller says her ex is at the door, so she has a protection order against them. Go, go with the location there. I think they might be looking for assistance. He's kicking off. Is he driving? No, he's walking. Kilo Alpha 104. He's standing all over me! He's standing all over me! He's standing all over me! Help! He's stamping all over me! Help! Help! He's stamping all over me! Help! 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 Let go me leg! Let go me leg! Stop! Let go me leg! 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 No kicking off now, alright? Keep it there. All right, keep it there. Put the leg in. Yeah, hey, stop hitting. I'm not waiting. No, stop one's, hitting. no one's hitting you. Watch your head. Watch your head. Watch your head. Watch your head, Greg. Head down. 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 You are. Go down, go down, go down. Turn it. There you go. We're under-resourced. So the six people that were dealing with him on the side of the road then had to bring him back to the station and he didn't calm down at all. Stop, Stop smashing Stop. our head. You're making it worse for yourself. Stop. 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 Put your hand behind your back for me, will you? No. Open the way you behave is going to dictate what we do next, all right? Now, as soon as you calm down, we leave. It's like they've superhuman strength. Like, they will not feel it. Like, and that's, that's your issue, like, you know. Now, there, look, there you go. You're breathing very well there. The cuffs have to go back on you because of your behaviour. You all right? What happened to you? He bit you on the leg. Yeah. You all right? Yeah, I'm so the same six that were battling him had an hour and a half of having basically to subdue him in the cell because he was trying to self-harm himself, like. Okay. 
doctor. Once the doctor comes, I'll get him to check your head, alright? I'll get your headache tablets, alright? Doctor is here, alright? Can I get you to sit down, please? If you're feeling some pain here, I can give you some tablets. No, this is superficial, yeah. Do you want tablets? He's asking. Do you want them? Yeah. For, for pain? Huh? Yeah, we'll take the handcuffs off you then. Oh, we have hands very much, you're a fucking gem. The next morning, he had no clue what had happened. Like, you know, he would have been sore, I've no doubt about that, from, you know, the injuries that he caused himself. But apart from that, he didn't know what had happened the night before, like, because he was that out of it, like. <sighs> Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Good man. No better way to spend it. <laughs> there's an arm member on each team and there's a breacher on each team. Ray is going to do prisoner escort for us, the van's there, so if he's got a prisoner, just give Ray a shout. So the hope would be um, whatever searches do first, if he's got a prisoner there, the rest of the member go at Ray and the rest of the team continue on, go to the next location. Oh, yeah, just another thing, be mindful about company cars outside. Just give outside a good search if there's any cars you think are bogey, because I suppose the MO around here seems to be they're putting in cars. Team two, Dan, and Dan's going to do the breaching. Dwayne, Fran, Kirsty, and Ryan, and Richie, will you be the armed member on that team? Team three is Kev, Brian, Simon, Craig, and Rebecca, and Will is going to be the breach, and he's the armed member on that as well. O'Malley, your team is you, Rob, Paddy, Karen, Neve, and Rory will go with yous as well. It's going to be carnage, isn't it? Huh? It's going to be chaos. It's all about not knocking on the door and forcing an entry and using the rammer, Bernie. The whole point is the element of surprise. If people knew that the guards were coming around to their house, people wouldn't have drugs or illegal things in their house. It's all about getting in as quick and as safely as we can so we can get everyone in the house under control and so no evidence or drugs would be lost. I've had this conversation with people like the house full of drugs and they're giving out with the door going in. Like I'm trying to explain to them like grand. The door won't come off the hinges if you ring me the next time and you say, look, it's on the doorstep and I'll pile it up for you. Like, it's just a mentality. We don't lock on doors from drug dealers yeah, in drug okay. dealers' houses. He's not a drug dealer. I know he's not a drug dealer, right? Hold on now. Yeah, OK, Graham. Well, we'll agree to disagree, yeah? We came here for drugs, but they're fine the drugs. All right, don't. As much as they're giving out about going to other people's houses, this was the right house for us to go to. And we don't knock on the door. I didn't knock. OK, well, now you know. There's a bathroom weed and cocaine found up there, all right? And a load of money. What did you get there? There was about 10 grand of weed anyway. A good bit of coke as well. Yeah, there was a good bit of coke. So we're saying two to three ounces, but we'll have to weigh it properly. Mm -hmm. We had everything, like the wagon, the weighing scales, money. And the big thing about him is he hasn't got a clue how much is there. Like, so no, he, yeah, he's like, I think I have around three grand. Definitely more than three grand there. Like, um, and he has bagging everything. It was a great, yeah. great day for the parish. Then. <laughs> 50 grams. What's 50 by 20? Don't ask me, Max, please. <laughs> you get the info. <laughs> right, you have to bag that back. Have you got to yeah. send us that photograph? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just four weeks worth of stuff here. And um, the likes of this bag of heroin here, that's about 35,000 euros worth. That was taken in the search, yeah. With cannabis, individual deals that go by here. They were found in another search. That's just four weeks, yeah. Yeah, this is a kilo of weed here as well. When the guards seize drugs, they put them in these barcoded bags and they put them into a drug safe. We then take them out of the drug safe and update them on Pulse and bring them to the Forensic Science Lab for analysis. So. That's the receipt that we'll get from Forensic Science Ireland when we drop the drugs up. And then once that's submitted, you get a cert then, certificate of analysis, which will tell you what the drugs were, the weight of them, what section they're illegal under, the Misuse of Drugs Act.
that would be used then for court purposes and given to the solicitor as proof of what drugs, what illegal drugs were seized in the case. What's the hurry? What's the hurry? You're flying around like a lunatic. Could you just don't leave me alone? I've slapped you about twice oh, in the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. I'm everywhere. I'm on camera. Yeah, I'm real. Who owns the weed in your car? Who owns the drugs in your car? That's that's drugs there. Or is it oregano? It's, that's your bag of weed, is it? Is it? All right, fair enough. Now there's a reason for flying around you, isn't there? Didn't that. You didn't know it was in your. It's a Friday. Oh, sorry, it's a Friday. Cannabis is, is everywhere now. It's it's like just getting hold of a pack of cigarettes. They could be stoned off their head, and they're driving around willy nilly, and you know someone could end up dying at the back of it, and people don't realise that. The gangland stuff, it's definitely at its worst and I don't trust anyone anymore. And I don't trust any traffic stop and I don't trust any call that we go to. And before, you know, it was a lot of like, you know, joyriding and your little bits of drugs and your criminal damages. Now it's like, I'm not going up there unless there's another two or three cars because I don't know what you're going into now. Where did we meet recently? Over Ashdown. In Ashdown? Yeah. Ah, Cokey McCokerson. <laughs> Jump out there. How many jumpers have you got on? Oh, it's cold there. Are you not cold? Do you know where it wouldn't be cold? Right. In your bed. Uh, we're after getting him here. He was hiding in on the grass here. He's in custody. It's just that Passat's after taking off at speed. Two tiny little young fellas in the front. One of them stupid Gucci hats. An innocent person doesn't get out of the car and leg it from the guards. No, I just can't. Panicked about what? No, I just don't like this. Place. What situation? You're the one that's after creating the situation. All we want to know is who was sitting in the car when he's up there. <sighs> What's wrong with you? I don't care at all. Yeah, because you have to get him caught out and you have to run like an Egypt. I think because the place is so serious and because the place is so busy, you have to be a bit eccentric in your own way. Where are you from, pal? Baldoyle. Baldoyle? You have to come the whole way over here for weed? There's no name around Kulak. Well, the ah, fella get off anyway. The fella in Kulak's also low. Yeah. What age are you? 34. What? Himself. What face cream do you use, man? Chill out a little bit or something. Do you want a hug? Do you want a hug? No, do you want a hug? It actually do, yeah. Would you like a hug? It is cold. A bag of coke fell from the sky and into that Audi. Same Audi he got out of. It was I've never seen nothing like it in my life. And no one knows who owns the coke. It's crazy. Madness. And what's happened is Flashy heads up the Gucci gang. They have an alignment with the Irish Kinahan organization. The level of firearms that this gang had access to is frightening. The body of the man found on Monday night at around 8 o'clock. The body's been identified as that of a male who died as a result of gunshot wounds. What's happened is that the Gucci gang used that Kinahan connection to create fear and to try and gain ownership over a lot of territory. The particular gang of thugs and criminals um, have a, I suppose you could call it a clubhouse, for lack of a better word. And that's where they congregate. What happened to glass? What glass? That glass. That's fitted out with bulletproof glass, CCTV, um, reinforced doors, and that's where they operate from. The very perception of calling a gang after a premium brand product, it says to other young people in the community, there's wealth there if we go down that road. They operate at a street level. They're a disorganised bunch from mid-teenage years right up to their early 20s. They look at taking control of young males within their community to use them as individuals, as safe houses for storing drugs, for moving firearms, for sale and, and supply of drugs at a street level. These are common criminals. They're thugs. They terrorise the local community and any perception that they are something very important, I think people need to be disabused of that notion. They do have access to firearms, they do have access to explosives and they are actively targeting other individuals and targeting members of the guards that are stationed in the quay. Look at the size of that young fella. On the ground, man! Out, out. I'm very suspicious when we observed you coming from the avenue. This is a known drug area. You're the only drugs. I'm ready on the ground. He could have he went down less. I couldn't see what he was wearing. Dog guard, we go. 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 We go
clue. I didn't see. So literally, I was standing at the back. Yeah. I heard loads of people running, and yeah. all I heard was petrol. Run. This younger crowd now, they buy their flashy runners and they buy their flashy coats and they buy their Canada Goose and they buy this and they wear their Gucci belt that's 200 euro and it's just like, I know what you're doing now because you're doing this. And then they say, to you, you know, they're driving a, a Merc car. Where, what do you do for a living? I don't work. I already know now I need to start looking at you. What is that passing through the window? Yeah, what was he passing through the window? What are you working at? Two different jobs. Two different jobs. You're working, Dylan. Yeah. What do you do for them? Oh, you fell a car and all that again. Very good. I mean, these young lads, they're seeing the likes of the Gucci gang, as they're called, making money hand over fist. Do you know, they're seeing that they're getting caught with drugs. They're not getting locked up. Again, what's what's to stop them, or what's to deter them from the, from going into that lifestyle? And they're making money, they're going around in their, in their nice clothes. So why wouldn't you? Sure, how do you know it's a real Gucci cap? Because I was there when you bought it. Really? Yeah, yeah, I was there when you bought it. I was there myself. Yeah, yeah. In the kiddie section. Oh, yeah, right, right. Oh, yeah, no. yeah, 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 no, no. Yeah, Which one was it? In the Gucci section. In the Gucci yeah. section. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's the stuff. In where all the other girls buy their Gucci stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 sure is. Get the strip search. They know. In Seven Rich, you can have a buzz, you can have a laugh at you. But if you start your shit and you start your your crap, it's done. Do you want me to? What'll you do? If you're gonna say it, back you're it gonna up, say it, like. say it, like. Sure, fucking oh, oh, so stop showing off in front of all of them. Sure, you are showing off. Come on out then. <laughs> you're so brave now that I came out here. We're standing here, Simon. What? It's worth standing here. Well, it's getting spent here. What do you do? What do you do? It's great when you hide behind the crowd, isn't it? <laughs> They're recruiting a lot younger, I find. It's very young now, like you've, you've 13, 14, 15 year olds doing jobs for them. Whatever about standing in the driveway, there's actual like kid kids in that driveway. Yeah. Like, like he's showing off in front of children. Can blow me, you know. Yeah, Fuck you, you yeah. fucking rat. Every single day, you hear it. Being a rat was always a term used for people that were giving information to the guards. You are a rat! You are a rat! You are a rat, you little bacon bitch! But now the guards are rats and everything, so I don't really know. When I was younger, it was always pigs. I think one person started it one day and then that's it. Like You know the way they love to copy each other? Yeah. They all dress the same, they all walk the same, they stand the same. They put their hands down their front the same. Sometimes they're hanging on the street, their mates are calling them rats because they're having a conversation with us. I think it's because we interrupt their lifestyle. We're constantly on their tails. The objectives of today's search is to secure the search area prior to the commencement of the search and locate and recover the firearm and the explosives safely without any injury or risk to members or the public. Again, your personal safety, lads, we're looking for firearms, we're looking for grenades. We don't know how safe th these items are. Um, we don't know if they're loaded, ready for use. We don't know, are, are the grenades safe if they, if they are there? The explosive dog is going to go in first, so there's no searching to be carried out until the dog has done its duty. Minimum amount of vehicles on site. So if we can just get your stuff together and be downstairs, we look to go for a quarter. All units stand by now for second time. Three units on route now. It's nice and quiet. Good. Okay. Guardy, guardy. 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 A lot of the time we have synchronised searches where we'll have a few of the same gang members being targeted by ourselves on warrants. So what will happen is we'll synchronise that the doors all go in at the exact same time so that nobody then can give the other person the biddy that we're, we're around. Three dogs out the back there, so... Yeah. Don't, don't, don't go out to them! We're going to get the dog warden to move the dogs if he doesn't want to move them for us. You're the householder here, are you? Is there anyone else in the house, no? No, no. Okay. 
it's right, you know that it's here. It yeah. shouldn't be here. Of any variety. Yeah. Any drugs, guns, anything no, like that. No. We're carrying out a number of searches here in the area at the minute and I have a warrant issued by a judge of a district court to search your gardens. Now who's the man now? Who is he? Will I, will I give it back to Barney, will I? Give me one of them. Another dog, is a vice. Another dog. Damn, you're never going to find anything. I see it probably as a good thing. I'm obviously doing my job if my name is known by them. They like to feel that they know you as much as you think you know them. To them, it's an intimidation factor. To me, it doesn't really bother me too much. You're going to see the police down here. You swear someone was at the bed fucking. You're going to see them out, the police. Look, we're there a lot, like, you know, most days we could be up to ten times patrolling, but, like, it can be the case that if we're doing searches that we could hit you on a Tuesday and we could be back there on a Wednesday, like, we're continuing monitoring. If there's somebody or there's something there suspicious and we believe that it's in relation to drug offences or firearms offences, like, we're coming back. Like, just because we hit it once doesn't mean that's it, it's done, like, it's a continuous basis. Today was five different houses and each of them presented different problems and different scenarios. That's one of the, the main houses that we believed that the firearms were going to be in. And as you can see, the difficulty there is where do you start and how do you tackle it where it's going to be safe. It is disappointing. You put a lot of time and effort into it and you stop everything else to do these searches and that's ultimately you have to do it. If you don't look, you won't find. But the fact that we haven't found it at least we've looked, at least we've attempted to firm up on the intelligence that we had. Unfortunately, today we've come away with nothing, but you only have to be lucky once, as they say. We're just in the era that social media is so prevalent, like, and they use it, like, you know, and successfully as well. The day of ringing a dealer is gone. It's Snapchat and Instagram now, like, that's how everything is sold. Then it's from our perspective, looking in on top of that, how do we target that or how do we combat that? Like, if they have a Snapchat, all they have to do is delete their story and that's your evidence gone in seconds. It's very hard to find out who's doing what because essentially you'd have to have Snapchat and you'd have to have their Instagram. Without social media, they wouldn't probably be as active as they are. I don't know where it's going to evolve or where it's going to go from here and what power we're going to be given to combat that. How's your business going? Yeah. Is it? Making a mint? Yeah. How many have you got working for you? You might buy a bigger pair of shorts, will you? you don't like the camera, do you not? Why not? You didn't get a chance to gel the hair today, did you not? We'll give a bit of notice the next time. You can have the hair gel and you can have a pair of trousers on you. Social media is a huge platform for criminals. The younger criminal, I will say, and the one that's probably not so smart, like, um, they will show the trappings of wealth. <laughs> what they also do is call each other out on social media. What's the whole one like? It's a nice body act, yeah? So they will tag the other person who they're feuding with. They will be in the local haunts that the other feud frequent and they will then upload it to social media, basically calling them out, saying I'm outside the chipper that you use now, what are you going to do about it? Like, so that has definitely fueled the fires of the feuds for us. Yeah, when you put me up, I'm going to your bathroom. 243, yeah? No, boss, she's going to have a go on, lads. Go it's about intimidation. It's about intimidating the communities that these people operate within. It's about trying to intimidate the guards by posting them personally, I suppose, on social media in a negative manner, trying to, I suppose, fracture the relationships between uh, the guards and the community by the amount of stuff that's posted on social media. Hey, hey Richie Fine, look like. <laughs> Why is there, brother? John Sanchi, the big nose bastard. The size of his nose. Two dickheads. Fuck off down at my gag, you two. Yeah, Devin's here, right? Yeah. No problem. Just stick it in the window from now on. No water. Yeah, no water, Todd. Fuck off. We don't need Fuck off. You get a bar shop. You've got to have lots of work, lads. You've got to start picking bodies up, you, sir. Don't worry about it. 
We have you, yeah? What I was taught in college was, when you're doing your duty, you do it as if you're being filmed. And that means you to perform your duties to the highest standard that you're not going to get any complaints. You're doing your job as you should do it. Get out of here. Go, out of here. I've got nothing to do with Grant, get out of here. Put the phone away. Walk. Uh -huh. Walk. So, like, if they want to film me, yeah, fair enough, you're going to tell them to put the phone away. But more than nine, nine times out of ten, they're not going to put it away. Put your, your hands behind put your, your hands back. Behind put your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. Oh, Jesus Christ, what have I done wrong? I've left the pub. Put your hands behind your back. I've left the pub. I'm not going to ask you again. Put, put your, your hands, hands behind your back. back. You're under arrest. Why? 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 Section 6 of the Public Order Act. We regularly get threatened, regularly attempt to intimidate us. We've had it in the past with people trying to identify us on social media and offer money. Where are you living? Manchester. 21 Hot Wheels Drive. You go to a serious incident and then you turn around and there's somebody with a phone stuck in your face. We don't know, is that person there to help the person we're trying to arrest or we're trying to deal with? We don't know what their motive is behind what they're doing. Don't spray him! Don't spray him, guys. Don't spray him, please. Don't, don't spray him. No way! Just get out to them, will you? It's all in your face and they have rights. They know their rights and, and it, it's all aggression. It's huge aggression. And then when you get the organised criminals that are, you know, threatening you or, or trying to get leverage on you, it's to try and bully you or intimidate you into not doing your job. And then if we can't do our job, then it breaks down with society. Like, where does the, the line draw? Not that we're desensitised. You just put it at the back of your mind and you just get on with your job. I have this on recording anyways. I'm entitled to record it. Just if anything goes wrong or that, you know? Record away, you're here. What's your address? Can I get to a line, please? Primary. Primary. Okay. Can I get to a line, please, guys? Stop resisting! He's not resisting the car guard! He's not resisting! He's a, he, there's 10 years on him, he's not resisting anybody! It's not resisting anybody! Video camera girl! Hello! Move away! Move away! Move away. Put video! Free man! Ah! What frustrates me, it's not the fact that they were, we're being recorded. We're not doing anything wrong. Record is all you want, it's not going to show us in a bad light at all whatsoever. But what gets me is the editing that they do to these clips sometimes. So the public sees a 15 second clip of us riled up and us acting in a certain way, but they don't see the 10 seconds previous, or the lead up to what has made us act the way we're acting. Get away when you're told to, all right? Get away. Yeah, all right? We'll bring you down to hospital, so. Do you want an ambulance? Yeah, will you fly him down to the hospital, so? He's having dislocated his shoulder. They're much more um, visible now in relation to what they're doing, like, and they're using social media as their platform, most certainly, like. That is just absolute severe, utter violence towards property, towards people. They don't know who's in that house and they're firing things into it. As well as the cars and stuff like that. It's just like they've no regard for anyone's property whatsoever, or anyone's life even. You have five, oh, four, three, two. It's fairly cowardly in my eyes. Like they're not showing their faces, they're just showing what they're doing but it is definitely their shop front and it's something that I think we kind of need to get a little bit more clued up on. Do you know, I suppose there was a time where they just used fists, but now they're cutting each other, or stabbing each other, or shooting each other. Social media is a double-edged sword. You know, it does great for some people and it can bring you down as quick as it can bring you up. Like, that there, people know that guy, you know. And once it's up on social media, it's up there for life. It's sad to see so many young people involved in it. Very quickly, they've gone into the spiral of they're given drugs to hold, the police raid the house, the drugs are taken, now they have a debt. The debt goes from €5,000, a week later they tell them it's €10,000. They end up on a pathway to either prison or, you know, seriously injured or, 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 or dead. Right, lads, 
we're going to crack on. I'm just conscious that we want to get doors in. Our operation this morning is on the yard up at Hull Cottages. What we're focused on this morning is gathering further evidence in respect of organised crime generally. It's a difficult enough site because of the risk that's presented up there. They're involved in a number of field incidents. So they're actively involved in targeting around the city, so the firearms will possibly be in close proximity to them. access to convertible Porsches, um, access to expensive Rolexes that we're happy are genuine and not, um, not counterfeit or anything like that. So there has to be a cab aspect to what we're doing up here this morning. Best of luck, lads. Thanks a million. around the back there, lads. Yeah, Dwayne's Dwayne, get around there. Good morning, Gardy. How are you? Yeah, Good morning. How are you? Selena is my name. Girls, when you just come into the uh, kitchen here, we speak to our man. No, hold on now. Just come back here. I want to go through. Hold on. Hold on now. Come back in, please. Yeah, yeah, no. Come back in. I want to go through the thing. You won't be getting out the most. Come here. Come in here. I'm going to go through the warrant, Richard. And then we want you to get your phone then, right? Come into the kitchen. All right? Now, can we keep it up? I'm not going to. Keep it up. Obstruction under the warrant. Oh, will you? Yeah, I will. Will you? Go on. Will you? You'll be getting the handcuffs thrown on you now, and you'll be getting thrown out. Like, Absolutely, I will. Oh, you will. Watch yeah, absolutely will. The drug scene is run as a business and it's controlled by criminals. And then I suppose those that are involved in that are looking at countering the policing operations. They don't want to lose money, they don't want to lose their drugs, they don't want to lose the, the money that they see us targeting with the support of CAB, taking the wealth that they're starting to build up. And that becomes important to them at a lower level, I suppose, within those gangs where we see the young people wearing high-value clothing, high-value runners, um, watches, simple items like that. And I suppose at uh, district level, that's something that we're actively targeting. I've been a real little bastard out of the So, OK, so basically we've, we're, we've a money laundering investigation underway, OK? We believe that's the proceeds of crime. Come here, come here, come here. you're going to be arrested now by the guard here, right? Can I get arrested for? For hand on stolen property. Come on, good woman. I'd love to know for days after you, you're a little ugly little bastard. Come on, good woman. I promise you, I get a proper charge because I'll dig you around. Of course. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. saying it all morning. Yeah, you're saying it all morning. You yeah, relax yourself, will you? I'm not trying to get anything for you in the house. Well, in the first day, we've got the uh, stolen property that's going to be in all of the players in the list there. So we have stuff like that, a lot of stuff related to trapping the wealth, like Louis Vuitton, having bags, like a lot of them, kind of uh, high value white and Rolexes. And then we're in the outfield of the field because there's a lot of roads are going to be So yeah, you know, to be fair, like, we're just only in you know, probably 20 minutes. Like, and, like, kind of the volume of stuff that we found so far, like, but it's very much ongoing, like, um, in relation to what we hope we can do more stuff here. Kilo heroin, it's a. Yeah. Well, to keep it dry as well, the humidifier. Probably up to a kilo, I think. More, co more cocaine then. Yeah. This perception that there's nice things out of uh, being involved with drug dealing and getting involved with gangs, that's what gets young people involved. So it's important for us kind of to strip away, I suppose, the assets that's associated with that. There's yeah, cocaine here, also subject to analysis. Uh, more cocaine, which is vacuum packed and then it's additional cocaine then again, which is uh, packed into separate baggies. Do you know how much is here? Just hidden 300,000, I think, a little bit over. Absolutely fantastic. Biggest I've seen since I joined the Yards. 
it is a game of cat and mouse. And this is what frustrates me sometimes when we deal with people who are involved in criminality and they have an issue with the guards actually stopping them and dealing with them. If that's the life you sign up to, we are going to be part of it. It's collateral damage for them. They should just accept that once they're involved in criminality, we're going to be around, like, you know. And I always think as well that when, you know, you're involved in it, one day we will get you, like. Lads, just to touch and starting off on it now, uh, criminal intelligence suggests that the drugs have been prepared and distributed from the address uh, at Ratto Drive, Fingness. We've noticed an incredible increase of activity around the premises. Most recently, the occupants has upped the ante against members of Angara Shiakana by actively setting out to damage guard vehicles. It is believed that, especially in recent times, that the occupants of Drive wish to make the surrounding area a no-go for Angara Shiakana to patrol and certainly not to get out of their vehicles. We have three arrests that will be taking place, and that will be for an offences under the Criminal Damage Act. All three prisoners will be conveyed to Blanchestown. The dogs in the street know they are dealing from this address, but they're living in a, a life of luxury, so to speak, with their bulletproof windows and bulletproof doors. Intelligence suggests that the aforementioned individuals have readily accessed the firearms are known to play an active role in drugs distribution, and three of their close associates have been murdered in the city in recent weeks and months. With that in mind, there's a personal safety issue for every member here. It's going to be quite a volatile environment up here and I don't want anyone not coming back or anyone coming back via the hospital or anything like that. So um, just, just bear that in mind. Mind each other. Everyone happy? We'll get going. Here you'll be in there on the button at nine. Roger, that will do. All units stand by next second time. Okay, that's all here. They'll be good to Entering the target's house, 39, we walked into the house and the units want to make a move. I am the right of the house. The unit is on route to over. Sir, stop 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 Have him, yeah. Relax yourself, no. Perfect, yeah. Relax your head. These people have absolutely no regard for, for police in this country. And if they're not respecting the police, what sort of fear are the community living in? There was four lads standing in that car and they ran that way and jumped the wall. Yeah, I think the chopper might have picked them and they'd gone to another house or something. There's cash here somewhere. There's what? Jesus, how much are we talking? It's a lot, is it? We didn't touch it yet? No. There's houses there that are friendly to the, towards the gang that will allow them to use their houses for storage of drugs. And also there's houses there where the people are terrified of them and a lot happens and they're not happy that it happens, but they turn a blind eye to it. One of our primary functions as a police force is the protection of life. If we receive independent intelligence to suggest that someone's life is at risk, we then would go to the home, we would advise them and we would serve a gym form on them. It stands for guard information message and then we manage that threat and we would have a dedicated detective who would liaise with the person who had the gym form and their family. Can I come in and have two seconds? Just listen very quickly. Thank you. You have been served, all right? You're served. We believe that there's a threat in your life, okay? I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. That's done. Sometimes they accept the advice and they take it on board. Other times they basically will tell us to leave the property immediately and will not engage. Uh, time. Tenta. Thank you very much. The big thing for us is to let them know that we are there and we're never going away. Like. We're searching them, we're stopping them. That's important to have the confidence of the community with us. And also it's important for the Garda members as well to have a bit of pride in your job that you're actually making a difference when it comes to them. Go ahead, you Control, just checking, is there an ambulance on the way to this call? <sighs> yeah, this gets me going. Mental health in the K-District, you could go 
three, four or five minute hold calls a day. A young male in his 20s, cuts on his wrist and cuts to his stomach. In relation to mental health, the Garda station is the worst place. We all have to recognise the issues around mental health. I remember just roaring at the guard, I was like, do not let me go, do not let me go. Down the knife, down the knife. Stand out, stand out, good man, good man. We're here, We're to, here help to help you, all right? Come on, come on out, come on out, good man. And the conversation around drugs and policing continues next with us on Virgin Media One with Matt and Ivan live in studio for The Tonight Show. <laughs>